Hello everyone, Pallytub here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we're taking a look at Sonya, a character that I've always been envious of. There are some really good players that can knock out amazing Sonya feats, and I have just never been one of them. And I know what talents to take, and I know how to right-click on stuff. I know how to attack move, but for some reason, I've just never really been able to pull it off. Even all the way back to the alpha, I remember just just some Sonya is wrecking everything, and then I could not do it. But how is Sonya doing overall? Well, to put things simply, great. She's sitting at a 51.26% win rate with a popularity of 20.77%. That's really, really good, especially compared to our last couple of characters. Her ban rate is 5.28%, so there are a decent number of games you won't be able to play her in if you're drafting, but that should not dissuade you too much. There's really good representation for Sonya across all of her abilities as far as builds that amplify their effectiveness. The spear is really good, and there are some cool plays that you can make with the mystical spear that always pulls. Her W ability, Seismic Slam, can do a monstrous amount of damage, and that's how I normally play Sonya. But I thought for this video, I would do something a little different and actually try out Whirlwind. It can apply so much healing to Sonya, if she's able to get away with spinning for a prolonged period of time. And let's be honest, after the last two characters, I was looking for something a little easy to chill with at the end of the day. Sonya was one of the launch characters that came with the game, and there were rumors for a really long time about giving her a male barbarian skin as well. I think they actually showed that off in some promotional footage at some point too, but that never actually came into the game. She does have a fantastic collection of skins though, some really good ones in here. The current version of Sonya that we're playing today, the, the reworked version of Sonya that we're playing today, was added into the game back in 2018 on March 6th. It has gone through some ups and downs since then, but she's been in a pretty good spot for a long, long time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Alteric Pass today. The friendly team, Sonya Leeming, hooked on Phonix, ETC, and Lili. The enemy team, Johannes, Agara, Nazi, Bo, Tranda, and Artanis. Uh, at level one, we're going to go for Tough as Nails. This is a generic block talent, supercharged to fit Sonya's playstyle. Every 16 seconds, gain 60 physical armor against the enemy hero basic attacks, reducing damage taken by 60%. Stores up to three charges and charges refresh 200% faster while Fury's movement speed bonus is active. What is that? Well, use Fury instead of mana, which is gained by taking damage or big attack damage. If you use an ability, you get a fucking movement speed bonus. They could really make that so much easier to read. And I wouldn't hate it at all. Everybody gets a spin. Respect the spin. Respect the spin. Sonya is a fantastic all-around character that I have really not been very good at ever. I remember watching people play her in the alpha and just being bewildered by the amount of things that they were able to pull off. And then I get on the character and try to do some of the same things and nothing happens. Today's builds are going to be focused on spinning and winning, and that's it. Hopefully, it will be a very easy time versus this particular team comp because they only have one stun and it's a skill shot. If I can avoid it, we will be just fine. As you can see, our lane clear here is actually pretty good. I went into some testing on a single target in try mode with Sonya, just to kind of see where all of our numbers are at. And at level 13, when we have all of our spin talents, it is a DPS increase even on a single target to spin. I was pushing out like 1.2K DPS on the target dummy with just autos, and it was like 1.4K, or that's way too high, whatever. It was more when I was spinning. I actually tested it. Those numbers were totally inaccurate, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but we also get a buttload of healing while we're spinning as well, so it's a very big incentive for us to always just be pressing our E ability. And this is extremely reminiscent of the Diablo 3 Spin to Win Barbarian, which is one of the most fun ways of playing Diablo if you ever get that build offline. You just sprint through levels at mind-numbing speeds. We're not going to be quite moving that quickly, 
But hopefully things go our way today. I've done 87 hero damage. Shit. Uh, now that we've hit level four, we are going to gain access to the hurricane. So our whirlwind is going to remove roots and slows from our character, making it so we can go where we please. Hopefully. I wish we were playing on a map that had more mercenary camps, but I'm just in a constant state of wishing that there were more mercenary camps. I'm going to engage onto our Nazebo friend here. A little too close to the towers, unfortunately. But because of our healing on our spin, we could just start to recoup that pretty fast. Uh, the objective is coming up really soon. I'm going to rotate middle and try to grab my sippy cup to be ready for this engagement. Arguably, this was a misplay. I shouldn't have chased under tower right before an objective. We want to have our sippy cup ready for the objective. But you know what? I'm using it now, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Nazebo staying up in the top lane means the enemy team is not fully committed to this objective, at least just yet. Spinning on top of the creep tumors allows me to keep up with the enemy team Zagara, even though she gets that movement speed bonus. We're going to spin onto these guys now just to try to maneuver around the body block that they were setting up. Great damage from our Phoenix catching the enemy team's Taranda. And now we're going to spin over here. And this is my, I, how many times do you want me to say I'm spinning? <laughs> this is my match commentary. <laughs> this is why Diablo is a very difficult game to commentate. Oh, there's an enemy over there. What am I going to do? Spin. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to do. Friendly team is in charge of the objective, so I can break off and get us up to level seven fairly quickly. At level seven, we are actually going to increase the amount of healing we get with Life Funnel. 35% of damage dealt is now being sent directly into our heart to bring our health back up. Uh, we do manage to grab the first objective relatively easily. The enemy team not really able to fight back there too much. Were you just sniped? Oh no! But the owls are still as deadly as ever. We're just going to move right into the minion wave when we fight these guys. We want as many targets around as possible every time we spin because that means we're generating more health because we're hitting more targets. So fighting inside of the minion wave is actually one of the most beneficial things we can do for our well-being. And if enemy, if enemy combatants ever clump up, we want to be right on top of them too, spinning for the extra healing. Uh, let's get rid of this creep tumor. I don't want any of that shit on my map. And we generate rage so easily that keeping the spin going is usually fairly simple. Rage is what we're using instead of mana. We gain some every time. I think we take damage every time we deal auto attack damage, or we can get a big burst of it with the ancient spear. When this impacts an enemy, uh, not only are we going to pull ourselves into them, but we're also going to going to get a large rage bonus as kind of an incentive to help keep us alive. I'm just going to try to zoom back to my team. I don't know if it's going to fucking be enough. No, it's not. That stun just catching me with a sliver of HP. And it looks like the enemy team starting to run us over here. Five members of the enemy team pushing down mid right now. Luckily, everyone else was able to escape. Hooked on Thonics up in the top lane, <laughs> destroying a wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you get that wall. I'm I'm a believer, dude. I think walls are important. I think you need to take walls down. I think that's absolutely a necessity. It removes player vision on the enemy team. Why wouldn't you want that? Uh, I am going to start this mercenary camp as well. The enemy team getting up to level 10 right now. Actually beating us by a little bit. Uh, we were ahead for quite a while. And our objective actually didn't finish off any of the buildings. They did a phenomenal job defending that first objective. Of course, the next one is a little more important. It does have more pushing power. At level 10, we are going to pick Wrath of the Berserker. Increases damage dealt by 40%. Reduces the duration of stuns, roots, and slows against Sonya by 50%. Last 15 seconds, but as we are generating rage, it will boost the duration of this skill quite considerably. Can I solo bomb? Nazebo did the spin of friendship. Does that mean he's watching? Does this work? I don't think I can do this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can do this at all. 
But maybe if my team comes up here, we could just do this really fast and then get the objective. I don't know. I'm just trying to keep this active to see how this is going to play out. It doesn't look like it's playing out very good for me. <laughs> uh, with the enemy team now moving in, I don't think boss is the best idea. Uh, I did play, I want to say, about five games of Sonya to get ready for this game and had drastically different outcomes in every single match, mainly based on the amount of crowd control that the enemy had. That was like the actual main determining factor on whether or not I was gonna have a fun time. I don't have my ultimate here, but we're still four people deep. Try oh my God, where'd the team go? <gasps> oh, I was still trying to deal damage to the back line. If I had Wrath of the Berserker up, we likely would have been a lot more durable there. Uh, with Lily dying, I guess I should have backed up a little bit faster. I do have a little bit of gray main syndrome on this character, but also it's still just trying to figure out like what I can and can't live through. Because really it's hard to gauge. I, I think, I think she's one of the most difficult characters to limit test on. Uh, we are heading towards the objective now. Everyone respawned and alive. The enemy team still on the same talent tier as us, but about half a level ahead at the moment. If we're able to move in here within the next 25 seconds, we can interrupt this objective. ETC about to move in at the bottom of the screen. Let's get in some damage on our Tannis. Wrath of the Berserker is popped. We're going to start spitting and winning on top of the zombie wall for even more health. Great ult from our Phoenix, dealing great damage to the enemy team. The spear is is in place and we continue to run in to almost tower range there in pursuit of Nazebo. We could spin on top of these roaches to get some healing. Ooh, just tried to use my spear on a minion for a little more healing there. Uh, the enemy team is forced back with two members of their army deceased. Is starting boss at the end of this objective a bad idea? Like, what if I, like, 20 seconds left, they are starting to respawn. Maybe they can contest. 15 seconds, team's holding it. What if I try to get 13? Oh, no, they're, they're reinforcing. I gotta be there, I gotta be there, I gotta be there. Onto our Tannis, just barely missed the spear. Let's make sure they don't get an interrupt here. I'm gonna spin right in this spot. That gives us the objective. Now full damage with Wrath of the Berserker out on the enemy team Zagara as best I could. They are starting to get some control of the situation, but we're able to spin again right on top of them, regening even more HP. Can we take down anybody? No, we cannot, but God damn it, look how long we lived. <laughs> That's actually crazy. And as we get into our later talents, it's only gonna get better. Our Ruthless will increase the amount of damage we deal to single tar to low health targets. And it's not even like they have to be that low. If they're just under 50% health, we're gonna be doing an additional 81 damage per spin. It's fucked. At level 16, we also start to really increase our tankiness with Nerves of Steel. I'm very much looking forward to that. And that will make these backline dives that we keep doing much, much, much safer, uh, especially as we get into the later half of the game. The objective is pushing, but it looks like middle lane is going to stand. Bottom lane already cleared out as well. The enemy team is doing a fantastic job of stopping us from moving in. Wrath of the Berserker is ready again. The enemy team pretty close to our front line. Rather than diving these guys in the next fight, I'm gonna try to play around my healer a little bit more, play around my team a little bit more. Uh, not sure where the last member of the enemy team is, but I would assume that they're rotating down onto this. Yeah, Zagara just showing up here. Let's make sure we get rid of that Nidus network if we can. Minions starting to run out as the friendly team is once again pushed back. Ooh, that could have been a really good time to re-engage. Spin on the tumor to clear it. Spin into the wave for more health. Oh, she thought I was going in. Yeah, sometimes it's just about sending a message. Stunning Johanna trying to keep her locked down. Now pressuring Taronda. I don't want her to be able to heal too much. Man, Johanna is so tanky though. Phoenix engaging with us right now. I do not have my spear to stun. 
but I do have my spin now. Good mosh pit should secure a couple kills here. Tyrande at the top of the screen doing a ton of healing. We're going to pop Wrath of the Berserker and try to trade right here into Artana. Spinning and winning now. Pushing them back to the back of their base. And she's just out of right. Can't do it. Can't do it. Nazebo's still alive, but the building does fall as we push down. It's bosses, 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 boss. Go boss. Everyone boss. Everyone to boss. Let's boss right now. Everybody boss. But kill this creep, though, because fuck that creep. Don't let him see. <laughs> I'll do it. Hold on. There we go. Okay, they definitely know we're down here. Taronda has scouted it. Will they be able to answer, though? I really, 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 really hope not. ETC is on the way. The boss is about to stun, and we pick it up no problem. Okay. Now, making our way to the objective, they have to decide, are we gonna deal with the objective or are we gonna deal with that boss? We're giving them an impossible decision because both of those things are really good for our team. Now, Johanna's starting to re-engage here and it looks like they're choosing to fight on the objective. A great initiation by our elite Torrent Chieftain, but I'm stuck in the zombie wall at the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and start spinning to remove those slows. Unfortunately, we weren't channeling the objective at all. This is my nerves of steel proc to give myself a little bit of life, but it looks like we're being forced out of this area. Lily really low on HP or mana at the moment, so let's all just reset and try to get back in there together. Uh, the boss did buy us a lot of time, though. The boss still got a lot of value. Because if we pushed in there and lost without this thing pushing the bottom lane, that would have been significantly worse. ETC is going to be back up in just eight seconds. Going to be rejoining us here. We want to camp. No, we need to make sure they don't get an early channel before ETC's up. We need to make, we'll keep pressure here. We don't have to fight him. We just have to let him know we could fight him at any time. Phoenix jumping in on the back line, though, makes me want to jump in on the back line. Oh, I'm fucking doing it. Oh, no. Rather, the Berserker is active. I'm spinning. I'm trying. I'm trying. Run away. Run. Everybody flee. Artanis may be stepping up a little bit too far. Yes, indeed. We're going to stun Zagara right on top of the mud slow. Remember, that slow does not affect me because of our early game talents. Top off my health on this minion wave. And two, one. Got it. Oh, but a great zombie wall stops me from being able to pursue too far. Now I think we move up and take their mercenary camp if we can. Get rid of this Nidus network if we can. Uh, 20 seconds until Zagara is alive. I'm just going to spin on top of this. Uh, if I could break away and clear mid, I probably want to do that, but I think we're doing just fine. If he wants to move in on this, he's more than welcome to eat that damage. More than welcome. Doesn't bother me at all. Middle lane does have quite a bit of pressure right now. I need to make sure I push with our team to make sure we actually siege something during this objective. Middle lane's fine, but there is a lot of a, a lot of XP there that I want to gobble up. Uh, and it looks like the enemy team never really getting back on track to contest this. Zagar is still really far beneath the objective. They never moved in with their full force again. Uh, if we could go in right here, I think that would be really good. Wrath of the Berserker is active, trying to move in on Taronda with all the damage that I can muster. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. As we dive past the tower, claiming the life of the High Priestess. That's what she is, right? Priestess of Illumin. Yes, yeah, 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 all right. That sounded more friendly. The enemy team trying to hold on to their middle building right now. Ideally, we get this really fast and then just cycle down to the bottom lane because tier two buildings are pretty good. Although, Johanna's stepping up a little bit too far. We managed to get in a ton of damage with our W there. We do see Nazebo with his Vengeful Spirit get interrupted by, I think, our ETC. I'm dipping out. I'm going to join this push. I want to get as much pressure on this building as I can. And we already had good pressure on this building because of the boss we took earlier as well. Not to mention, we deal critical hits with everything that we're doing. Moving into Johanna now, unfortunately. Rage bar a little low. Tower focusing me. Let's get rid of that aggro. This guy's super out of position. Let's lock him down right next to Phoenix. The beam is on me, but that doesn't... E oh, beam's not on me. Beam's on Lily. 
Uh, this building's days are numbered as we move in and deal the final strikes. Now that Johanna's used her Condemn, we can go in with our spin, taking down Taronda. Oh, just barely missing the hook onto the other half of the team. Uh, I'm going to dip out, and because they're backing up so much, I think we can keep a lot of pressure on middle lane here. Clear this lane as fast as we can. And at level 20, I'm going to pick up Ignore Pain. Activate to gain a massive amount of armor. We could do that while we're neck deep in the enemy team. And spinning, healing, hopefully not getting interrupted. It can provide so much more sustain. We walk the minion wave right up to the only remaining tier 2 defense of the middle. Yeah, but I think we might be forced out here, actually. I don't know. Oh, you lucky motherfucker. Oh, you, oh, you lucky motherfuckers. Let's make sure we're giving ourselves armor right now. We can spin back into this team for some more healing. Nazebo dangerously low, holding inside of the ice block, but he's not going to make it out of it. Taronda now looking pretty good as she's moving up a little bit too far. However, the body blocks of this enemy team stopping me from really getting to her. Beautiful combo by ETC and Lee Min take them down. We're chasing after Johanna, forcing her into the falling sword. And look how long Wrath of the Berserker has been active. It's actually so good. It's And if we like land our Q, we can keep it going basically indefinitely. <laughs> Too bad I never land that ability. The enemy team's core taking a Q from my book, going after us with a whirlwind. How did she cover that much ground? What was that? What the fuck? Uh, we should be able to move in and finish off the enemy team's core right here. Now, if we are not successful, this thing will heal up a decent amount. New minions coming in means I have more healing, but I'm immediately interrupted by Johanna, who's just trying to hold on with everything she has, but it is not going to be enough. Four mercenary camps captured, four members of the friendly team on the board. Very good showing all around. So the talents I went for in today's video are not mandatory by any means. Sony actually has pretty decent build variety. She has very good seismic slam build as well that you can try. Uh, this will be so good. It's so much sustain if the enemy team doesn't have a lot of CC to stop you. When I was looking at the enemy team's lineup, I thought it was only going to be Taronda that I had to deal with, but the Condemn from Johanna, who also went Condemn build, proved a little bit difficult, but we did just fine. Talents I used in today's video, Tough as Nails, Hurricane, Life Funnel, Wrath of the Berserker, Ruthless, Nerves of Steel, and Ignore Pain. That's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Up next, we're taking a look at my favorite character. Oh, next week's going to be really good. Stitches, Stukov, Sylvanas. That's a good week. Man, and I haven't played Sylvanas in years. All right. See you guys later. Bye.